plant people how are you guys doing today if you're new around here my name is ashley and i'm a soul scientist on this channel i like to take that science and apply it to all things plants in today's video i'm going to be talking to you guys about cover cropping and a number of different ways you can do it and particularly why i'm doing it here in these beds behind me now i am slowly converting my front yard to a garden in the name of youtube and hopefully not disturbing any bylaws in the process <laughs> you can tell that my grass is slowly dying because i am not watering it try to kill it off as much as possible um for next year where i'm going to put even more beds in place and here are two beds that i just recently started so i'm a soil kind of gal meaning this is not compost it is straight soil <laughs> with some combos mixed in give given but it is mostly soil so what i'm going to be doing is peas now the reason why i'm doing legumes is because they're nitrogen fixing and they have about 60 days to harvest meaning if i have a later fall which i'm not expecting to have i could technically potentially still get a yield they are dense enough that they serve you know a pretty good purpose they're inexpensive enough that i can plant a buttload of them and I don't have to worry about killing it off or burning it down in the spring. So that's kind of the reason why I selected legumes. Now there's a number of different options you can go with from rye grass to wheat to legumes and everything else in between. The choice you go with is going to depend on what goal you're gonna go for. So if you want me to do a video on the different types of cover crops and the benefits of them, please let me know in the comments down below. I will be sure to gather data on that for you and then cultivate a video. But in the meantime, I'm going to be doing peas. Now the density in which I'm going to plant a cover crop is going to be pretty dense. I'm not going to follow regular spacing recommendations. We're going to pile these babies in. Now, the purpose of this is to first off stabilize the soil. When we have roots or any sort of top cover, we reduce erosion in the form of wind or water erosion. So because these are in sealed containers and I did underfill them, I'm not too worried about water erosion, but I am slightly worried about wind erosion. Saskatchewan is a very windy province, so I'm sure it will happen to some degree. Having a cover crop will prevent that. The other reason for the cover crop is to get that rhizosphere working. We don't often talk about this when we talk about cover crops on the internet, but the reality is, is that when the soil has activity from the in the form of roots, we have exudates being released, meaning the microbes are ready to go. In order to prep the soil or have it ready for next year, I want to prime it in some sense. And to do that, I can put a cover crop in place, and in particular, a legume crop, meaning I'm going to get very specific nitrogen fixing bacteria in this area. Now, besides the peas, I am going to be doing a eco tea. I just found this literally at Early's here in Saskatchewan. There is part A and there is part B. Now, this was in the same spot that the Mackenzie seeds inoculant used to be in. I was in a bit of a rush and I assumed that this was the inoculant replacement that that's not the case um, Mackenzie seeds I don't know what you guys are doing I don't what happened to the inoculant is it gone now I used to use this stuff every single year and now it's disappeared and this has some inoculant in it it's made in Manitoba antibiotics in it it has nutrient cycling iron scavengers phosphate solubilizing nitrogen fixing hormone producing and it is very clearly in some way shape or form a microbe because it says cool dark place which means if you apply this apply kind of at dusk dawn or night preferably and to reduce the destruction that may happen to light hitting it because it is in this really nice sealed pack now they don't have the percentages or the cfus inside of this program which is slightly irritates me i do like to see that on my product however i do want to try this out it looks like it is a pretty diverse um, array of microbes if it has nitrogen fixing phosphate solubilizing nitrogen scavenging like that to me sounds like it probably has uh, fungi and bacteria maybe some yeast other things in there so i'm gonna give it a shot i'm not going to recommend it i'll leave a link down below if you want to give it a shot too but it's called eco tea it's a canadian company so works on all seeds I grabbed it because I thought it was inoculant. It's not. Ideally, ideally, it has inoculant in it. It says nitrogen fixing. It has some form of inoculant in it. And um, at the end of the year, I can show you the nodulation on these legumes, see if we can get any out of it. Just let me know in the comments down below. But regardless, I am going to apply this. So this is a part, 
one and two. Uh, you gotta do two tablespoons of A, one teaspoon, or one, two teaspoons of A, one teaspoon of B. I'm just gonna dump some in because it expires in December of 2022. So we're just gonna let this baby rip on the soil because the reality is, is if your microbes are going to die anyways, you might as well put them in a medium, AKA soil that they potentially could survive in. My pea seeds are in the bottom of this. And a classic soil scientist would definitely use her coffee mug to um, put microbes into. And I guess I will reuse this. I will drink out of it. I'm not fussy. Okay, peas are broadcasted. Now, one thing I will say, people will often send me DMs and photos of this. And they'll be like, oh, I have a hard clay. This is not clay. This is not a sign of a clay soil. What this is, is it's a sign of aggregation. It's a sign you're working with soil and not straight compost. Soil is meant to aggregate. This will happen below the surface as well. And this is a great place for microbes to hang out in. So this will allow for air to go into the soil and around these areas where the oxygen is penetrating will get more microbe basically activity where they phosphate solubilize and they nitrogen fix and they mine for iron as that package said and a number of other different very important tasks at hand will be done in a soil now soil will contain inorganic compounds like calcium and magnesium and um, you name it boron uh, manganese inside of it if you watch the 17 essential plant nutrients playlist you would know this and that's the reason why I use soil over compost. So don't be scared of this. This is good. Aggregation is good. So what I'm going to do, though, with my pea seeds, you can see them kind of scattered, is I'm just going to scatter them more. Cover crops, again, you don't have to be very picky about it. And I actually could use more peas. So I'm, I'm going to go get some more tomorrow, I think. So what I'm going to do, I actually got the biggest pack. I guess I underestimated the size of these beds. I'm not sure. My husband got these for me from PB Mart, so, or Princess Auto, Princess Auto. Okay, so I'm going to mix these in, and then I'm going to do a light dusting of uh, peat on top of this. You can use coconut coir, compost, whatever the case is. Thin, very nice and thin. It is literally just for moisture retention because it is was 36 degrees here today and it's supposed to be hot for the rest of the week. So the ultimate goal of cover cropping is to ensure that the soil is not bare, which means that you can use it in an instance where you're establishing a bed later in the year for next year. It could be used in an instance where you're going to rototill an area for next year. You could cover crop it, or it can be used in an instance where you know something is about to be pulled out and it will be bare for an extended period of time. So garlic, beets, carrots, lettuce, spinach, all these things are beginning to be harvested in our cold climates. And so you may want to consider putting a cover crop in place. The goal is not to harvest from the crop. It is simply just to keep the rhizosphere, the area in which the roots interact with the soil, biologically active with all the microbes your soil needs to grow. Also reducing soil erosion. So it works great. It's a known fact that this works well. People in Canada just tend to shy away from it because they get a little bit concerned about the fact that they won't get a harvest off of it. The goal is not harvest. So I want to thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye. The filming for this is going to be so much fun because I live on a busy street. So it's going to be very loud, the entire process.